I'm Piers Corbyn of WeatherAction.com, Long Range Weather and Climate Forecasters. And today, Wednesday the 11th of July, I'm going to tell you firstly about the important extreme weather events that have been happening around the world, which we predicted, and give you an idea of when there's going to be decisive changes. And secondly, I'm going to comment on the latest delusional claims by the CO2 warmest camp which were released today. If you go on the website, there's three summary forecasts of uh, what we said about Britain and Ireland and about Europe uh, available on the web. And there are also three summary forecasts of what we're saying about the USA as well as the complete forecast for the USA this July. Now, these are broad brush descriptions of the most extreme type of things to expect rather than daily detail, but they are important ways in which decisions can be made about uh, planning ahead. Now, for Britain and uh, Ireland, we predicted at the start of the month that it was likely to be the wettest July on 247 years of recorded rainfall in England and Wales. And we are now even more confident of that statement. We're at least 80, 90% confident of that statement. Though at the start of the month, we were just 60% confident. For the USA, we said, and this held for late June as well, that there would be quite a lot of contrast between the northeast parts of the USA and the uh, southwest. And generally speaking, during July, the northeast would start getting cooler and there'd be big storms, tornadoes, very big thunderstorms, stuff like that, strong winds. Uh, and major heat would continue uh, in the southwest and we, we will see some more major uh, fire events. And that's been confirmed as has... Uh, the situation in Britain and Ireland, of course, which has been massive flooding. Uh, and for Europe, we made the point that there would be uh, big contrasts east and west with rain in the northwest and very hot weather in the east, including forest fires. That has happened and will carry on happening. And there's interesting other developments beyond the region at which we forecast, namely there have been floods in the uh, east of the Black Sea, um, and there's been quite a lot of extreme events in New Zealand, all of which have occurred in our red warning periods, the top ones, R5 and R4, they're called. Now, question, what is causing these extremes? The answer is basically the position of the jet stream. Instead of their centres going generally to the north, are going through Britain, or sometimes even to the south of Britain. That means rain, rain, rain for Britain. And depending on what happens in Europe, the consequences are in this case are heat in East Europe. When is all this going to change? Well, standard meteorology have just said things like, oh, they can't see any change happening all through August into September. Well, fine, but actually they do not know what they're talking about. They cannot predict the jet stream anyway, um, whereas we can. What we are saying is that the extreme flooding situation in, in, in England and Wales especially will continue. The contrast in, in Europe will continue. The basic setup in America will continue all through July with wobbles and changes, of course. And it will carry on into August. And uh, during that time, we can say that the Olympics opening ceremony on the 27th of July is very likely... 80% sure, at least, very likely to be deluged, and there will be ongoing deluges during the Olympics, including thunderstorms, giant hail, very uncomfortable events. And that will go on for the whole of the Olympics, and the rest of uh, uh, August will uh, uh, carry on the, like that for 
a bit until the 18th to 20th of August. In that period, there will be fundamental changes. And after that, Britain and Ireland will become dry and fine and sunny. Not necessarily very warm, but that will be the situation. And it's not going to return to normal, but it's basically going to be a different type of abnormal jet stream and circulation. The important thing to understand is, you see, the jet stream is driving all this and the solar activity drives the jet stream. And we can predict events on the sun, show the jet stream moving and consequential weather events. Uh, and all this jet stream being further to the south uh, for the whole of the northern hemisphere, basically, on average, means a colder northern hemisphere. Okay? And in the south, it's, it's shifted upwards, the other jet stream down there, and it makes a colder southern hemisphere below, below parts of Australia. We are approaching, therefore, what's called a little ice age of generally jet stream further south, generally colder, colder climate, giant hail events are more common under these circumstances. Last time they happened was the early 1900s and the mid and late 1600s. That is where the world is going. But the global warmers have us pointed in a different direction. Now, today they issued a statement. Uh, this is the BBC and the Climate Change Committee. The Climate Change Committee was a committee set up by the Climate Change Act in 2008 where Parliament voted for the first time in history against nature. What they're saying is, and they issued it today, oh, well, this is caused by CO2. Now, as they say in London, you're having a laugh, aren't you, mate? Now, let's just think about it. What are they saying? You see, either I would say they are actually, you know, logically strained, you know, or they're totally dishonest, OK? Because let's have a look about it. Jet stream moved to the south means cold. That's a fact. All standard meteorologists say that. Jet stream to the south is cold, OK? Must be, because it's warmer to the south of the jet stream and colder to the north. So they're saying the CO2 causing global warming is causing cooling. Ah, problem there. It's a logical nonsense. But that is what they're saying. Now, what it means is actually when the Met Office started talking about the jet stream, which they haven't done for years, whereas we have, they've signed the death warrant to the warmest camp. There's no way they can carry on purporting that CO2 is causing these, ex these extremes and the jet stream is shifted to the south, which it observationally has. Now, the BBC said today, no one expected that it would be both floods and, and drought. Well, actually, no one ever said they would happen both together. The warmest did say, first of all, there would be tons of drought, and then they changed their story to floods. Now they have these crazy things like floods with drought, which is mad and doesn't happen. The extremes are caused by the jet stream changing, which is driven by solar activity, nothing else. Have a look at our forecast. The summaries, make use of them, apply them and let us know what you think. And in terms of what is going to happen in the future, the governments who want to collect taxes on the back of climate change delusionism have to be stopped. Their tax raising game has to be ended. What we've got to have is accountable science and accountable policies. And I would urge you to fight for those, oppose this crazy idea that the Met Office should be given £43 million to get the wrong answers quicker than bigger computers. This is silly. And above all, fight for accountable science and policies. Thank you.